Yes. Before before we start, mm -hmm. show them this book. Mm -hmm. So we got this um book here, mm -hmm. given by um String and Coral Beads, the mm -hmm. original poetry of Barawa. So this book was written, edited, and translated by Alexandra uh, Muhammad Kasim and this lady. I don't know. I can't pronounce her name. Ledwin Captain. Mm -hmm. So this what they did was they compiled all these poems mm -hmm. from um from major scholars from 19, 1892 to 1975. Mm -hmm. So you'll find poems here written by Dada Masiti, by Sheikh Owais, Sheikh Qasim al Barawi, there's Muhammad Sufi, Malim Nuri, mm -hmm. Sheikh Nuren, I don't think he has any. Mm -hmm. I think it was also, that was a different time period. Mm -hmm. And it's also um, Sheikh, Ab, Sheikh Muhammad Abba, Sheikh. Sheikh Abba. Sheikh Abba, yeah. yeah. And if you look up, it's actually amazing, like if you look at the contents, mm. so you'll see the poems, mm. you'll see that the name here, the city, and you see all the poems she wrote, mm. and they, what they did was they write the biography of the scholar, mm. and then they write the, the intro about the poem, of like what year the poem was written, why she wrote that poem, and then she, that's the, that's the, the, the part of the theme that they done, so Mali Nuri, all the poems he wrote. And this was like a time period. So don't forget, mm -hmm. Alessandra, she lived in Barawa for mm -hmm. quite a few years, isn't it? And she is, she's married with a Barawanese. She is. Yeah, we met yeah. her. She speaks yeah. fluent Barawanese. Yeah. She's but, like a Barawanese. Anyway. Better than most of us, in fact. <laughs> and yeah, so... Originally, I mean, she's from Italy. Yeah, she's Italian. She's Italian. So what it did was, she compiled these poems. She went to ask around. Mm -hmm. It took a lot of dedication, a lot of research. I mean, in Barawa, there's a lot of manuscripts, and a lot of these poems are preserved. True. Isn't it? She, like, like this one here, manuscript. This is a poem here, mm. written by one of the early scholars. So they used this and to translate it. It was so difficult. Sure. But, but yeah, so let's talk about the Damasiti, because she didn't yeah. talk about the Damasiti in this book here. So, Manasiti, her, her mm. full name was um, mm. Manasiti bin Habib. With Jamal al Din Sharif Sharifa. Mashallah. Uh -huh. Well, really, I mean, but about this, when you say that name, they may not recognize. They may not who, recognize. Yeah, who is this name? Because most of the Baravanese, as we know, just mm. as the Dadama city. Because Dadama, Dadama is grandmother, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, so we call it, but she was an elder at that time, she was yeah. like poetry, and we yeah. call it Dadama city. Yeah, but it's, it's, a, it's a good now you mention it, the whole mm. real name. Yeah, and oh, she was around. Name. She died in 1919, so that's, that's that's a long time. Yeah, and yeah, and her house is still there in Pai today, still standing, isn't it? True. Mm. It. Yeah, starting from the early ages, first as you mentioned, uh, the yeah. Lama city. So what we take from the books written by mm. this and also this, they wrote briefly about Our city. research. Yeah. Um, her her childhood, her growing up, mm. not, there's not much written about her, like her family relatives. Well, like, Nothing. That the, only, the only thing you have left is what she wrote about herself in her poems. Mm -hmm. So, like one of her poems in mm -hmm. Ya Rabbi Muta'ali, mm -hmm. is a poem that she wrote. Um, she talks about her childhood growing up, and she sure. mentioned how mm -hmm. when she was a young girl mm -hmm. in her teenage age, mm -hmm. she um, was sent to Zanzibar. She was taken to Zanzibar yes. at a very young age, yes. and she talks about this in her poems how what she went through, the struggle, and how she was stuck there. True. And then one of her cousins, maternal cousins, mm. Omar Kulaten, mm. she he was passing through Zanzibar. I think mm -hmm. he lived in Zanzibar, mm. and he recognized that the man city, mm -hmm. and she saw that mm. like, she saw like what is she doing here? Mm. There's not she's alone with your family, mm -hmm. and, she, and he at is that there. time she wasn't like. Uh, that the city famous or scholar or anything. She was just like a small girl. Yeah. Like some, seven years old. Yeah, some historians uh, they, they differed what happened. Mm, some say they mm, were kidnapped, some say mm, she went to do she was just taken. Yeah. So but then she, he when he saw that the Man City sitting mm, there alone, mm. he sent her back to Barawa, her hometown. Yeah. And then when she went back to Barawa, that's, that's when her life changed. That's where the journey starts. That's when her that's mm. when she made she became so devoted to the law. Yeah. 
she became so like um mm. uh, her uh, spirit spiritual um she was, she was so into spiritual like the Sufi way True, yeah she started writing mm. poems and mm. right side and she was like one of the first mm. female poets in the world wasn't yes she? and that's well, when she started writing poems True, yeah. I mean, Dadema City, as we can say, her location or where she used to live in the area, which call it Mpai. And that Mpai, it is just by the, by the thing, by the sea and uh, surrounded by the oldest mosque, Jamia, in that area and the one side, yeah. And one side where is the fish market, the beginning of the fish market. There's a lot of places that area. That area was uh, the first area to be built in Barawa, Mpai. So Dadama city has got a big land down there in that area. And part of it, he, I mean, she built it. Uh, she made it her house and the half of it she gave it away as a graveyard for only Masharifu people because she was from Ashraf. that yeah from that clan or that tribe Masharifu Mahadali so that's why she dedicated half of her plot or her land to the graveyard for Masharifu to be buried there and the half of it she made in her house and she lived there till she died and as you said that the city She's very well known in Barawa and she's the first female scholars, female uh, teacher of uh, religious in Barawa because at that time it was really, really not heard of it or not like trying a lady to come to be like a teacher or a scholar mean to be famous so it was just like uh, yeah i mean there was a lot of female mm. that are, they were like on hair level they were very knowledgeable in islam mm. they but they couldn't them. reach it that time so that's why she encouraging all the females all the ladies to follow her mm. and uh, what she did she was as i said before nicely and sweet the religion she put it into our dialect and then she made it poems that people will memorize and use it and everything so she did in a different way that normally people try to teach people because sometimes especially with a female if you do with a hard rock or, or like uh, the way the man does they may say now it's hard or anything but she she started with a poem she started with a slowly low slowly way which the, all the females like it and some of them they followed her steps footsteps and follow her with the poems and they're starting to write or saying poems themselves and that's why in Barawa most of the Quran like uh, Chivo or Duxi is populated or dominated by female it's not like other people in Somalia, if you go to maybe Marka or if you go to Mogadishu, if you go to other places, the Duxi is dominated by men and you have to do by heart. But we are in Barawa, we have a different way. It is females who teach kids, like us children, for Quran. And it's just like you do with the, with the Mus'haf, not by heart. So that's why all this be came from Dadama city because it's sort of like she opened doors. the doors for female to fit in into the religion and to teach people, not just learning, teach people. And that's why it became all the females starting to make duxi or chiwo mm. to bring children to teach them Quran and so on, so on. That the city made it the poems, so on. Uh, I mean, communicated with the females who were stuck in the house, come out, learn and teach. That's what her aim was. That's what she was famous. Yeah, for. just learn and teach. Don't just learn and stay at home. Learn and teach, and that's why they became the females in Barawa teaching children and teaching even Safina. Safina is like a. Chiwa or the book which teaches you 
how to do the ablution like wudu, how to pray, how to, to keep yourself tahara and everything. It's like beginning. That's why the females, they used to know that, that little book very quick and very easy to teach other people, the kids and everything, as we used to go to the mosque to be taught there. And the girls, they used to be taught by females in the Chiwoni or the Duxi. So she changed the whole, the whole she changed the whole, poetry. exactly. And she changed the whole uh, ideas of femaleing, just not doing anything. And but now we came to Europe that we see like uh, when they say like ladies fast or ladies are smart or I'm not exaggerating. I'm just saying about Dadama City in that century. She died in 1919. And before she was, I mean, she was living there. And before that, we're talking about 18th century. 18th century in Barawa started females to teach people. Females to, I mean, learn. So you can see like, for us as a Barawanese, unfortunately, we lost it that, that uh, I mean, that way or that step to... I mean, bring yeah, ourselves, yeah. especially our females. We just lost it, and then we became just like naive to teach or learn, especially with the females. And then we, when we came to Europe, we saw like females are smart and ladies first and everything. But as a Barabanese, we started in that century, 18th century, in Barawa, that females, they were dominated to teach people in religious. So that's why myself personally, I praised and I really proud of Dadama City, what she did to us as a Barabanese, what she started, how effort she put it in our females, in our ladies, to give them, to boost them up. I mean, to, until, until today, Dadama City is remembered. So remembered today, by, his, by her, her poetry. poems, poetry like and everything. Even we, we, people recite their poetry. Exactly. What is it called? The, one of the poems they recite every year up to like Modi. Yeah. Or Nis, Del, Del, yeah. Del, Del, there's Del. a lot of them like Dadama City, which is famous Dadama City in Somera and the other stuff. And uh, herself, she made it a poem specially for Sheikh Noureni when she was, I mean, when she was there, Sheikh Noureni was dying. And uh, Sharon Noureni was asking her personally to do a poem that not let the people cry for me. Yeah, so I'll make poem. like poem, tell them like one of them is like, mad, uh, what's it called? Uh, Shari, called Shari uh, Chifaz Isiloa, yeah, but, yeah. which means like when Sharon Noureni die, don't cry. The, the, poem, the, the title of the poem is called Bat the Ahayi uh, Nimoti, so yeah, exactly. after life comes death. Yeah. And one of the verses in the poem is Bad the Ahayi Nimoti and Sheikh Chifa is lower. So after mm. life comes death, when the Sheikh dies, mm. no one should be weeping. Even that, that, just that bit, the one you said on the poetry and poems, mm. it gives you a lot of meaning, a lot of sense mm. that uh, she was uh, telling, not just like certain people, telling all the people, Baravanese, that there is a death. Yeah. This is actual Abu Bakr. Yeah. This is the actual poem that was found in Barawa. Of this poem here is called um, Badia Hayi Nimoti. Exactly. It was Sheikh Moran who requested Dadama City to write this poem for yeah. him, for so him. that when he dies, she releases it, mm. so for the people to understand that yeah. I'm just a man when I die, do not cry exactly, over me. Yeah. And in this life after death, there's a lot of meaning. And in the poem goes like. This, the poem is like more than, more than 30 lines, 36 mm. lines. Mm. Like it's just talking about life after death. Life after death exactly. And then should, I'm trying to encourage people not mm. to go to this excessive exactly. crying and, and thing. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and then my, that's the, that's the mm -hmm. city for you, isn't it? That's the, mm -hmm. what she left for us. The she left a lot. She left a lot for us and she teach us a lot. Mm -hmm. Although we... We were not there, but he just transferred all the efforts, all the things that she taught other people. He came all the way to us. And as you say, till now, some ladies, they, they just talk about it. They know the poem and everything. They just 
sometimes they sort of like singing those poems and everything so that's why her legendary or her stuff still living till now with us mm. that's the good about it that's, so, uh, that's that's not just at the mercy that's mm. all the scholars in Barawa that's what exactly. they left I mean mm. looking at this book here yeah. how thick it is and yeah. all these are just poems and things that True. scholars wrote mm. and True. there's just a, like a scratch of the of what we're really dealing with this so many as well True. there's another book that, that Alexandra yeah. wrote there are a lot of scholars, but today, as we said, like we, we were talking about Dadama City, that's why I'm praising and uh, talking a lot about Dadama City. As we said, there's a Sheikh Mureni. Sheikh Mureni is another legend guy in uh, religion. We're going to talk uh, his own episode and everything. And uh, just to talk a little bit about Sheikh Mureni, it was the same time with Dadama City. That's why we mention Sheikh Mureni now because they are linked. Mm. So he, he was around 80 years old at yes. the time of his deathbed when he requested that poem. Yeah. So you can imagine that. And that even that the Masiti learned a lot from Sheikh Nuren. So when you have, when you have a scholar so mm. old, 80 years old, and he, he was a major scholar, yeah. he was a jurist as well, mm. and when he's, when he's requesting a female at the Masiti to write a poem, that's how yeah. they respected. That's how much respect they had for them. Exactly. That's yeah. they were, I mean, the old people, like, uh, they were respecting each other. It doesn't matter whether you are female or male, as long as you got the knowledge, knowledge and encouraging people to do good things. Mm. You became, I mean, you become like a very figure person and the scholars will come to you or will talk to you or will write to you. So it doesn't matter which, which, which gender are you or who are you. It's, it was like that time, I hope. Uh, we keep that momentum till now. Hopefully we are. I mean, um, the problem is women today. Yeah. They are really driven in the in education. We know a lot yes. of that. Well, uh, well qualified. Yeah. Bear in mind, there's a big gap from civil war till now. Yeah. So some of them, they lost At their least. track. Some of them, they had the opportunity to continue their knowledge and everything. So that's why, but as our message is, we need just to recognize and we need to tell people as a female, you're not just like sitting and uh, doing nothing. You can do everything, you can encourage people, you can teach people, and you can do a lot of stuff. And as they say, as the English said, every great man there is a woman or great woman behind. So that's why. And this is what we were talking about Dadama City. Mm. She was great. She was a very intelligent lady. And she put it a lot, a lot of efforts to teach her people. The whole life was just Brazilian. devoted to... Devoted to teach people, yeah. not be just ignorant. That's what she remembers. That's what she told today she's remembered. Yeah. Yes. All right, so mm. I think that's enough for... Well, not enough, but not enough, for but the camera wise, yes. Enough. So we hope, hope we can pick up another scholar, inshallah, next time. Yeah. So if you we have any questions, them. any leave a comment, we'll read it, we'll answer it. And the other thing, we I just want to say, if we miss something or if we just made mistake, made mistake, you know that you can comment or you can tell us. We are just human. Yeah. We're trying to bring these people, like our our legendary people into life so that other kids remember. will remember and learn about it yeah now this is all youtube and internet, and it's not more yes books. yeah so yeah thank you for oh. watching no worries <laughs> that was 20. <laughs> مجد في العلا نسب طاهر رجالاتنا جند ساهر سواحل لا كنز ظاهر سلام الله سلام الله سلام على أهل بلد